Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and my X account is still banned and I am, instead of waterboarding, they are using Chinese cat videos to torture me. They continue to do it. My feed is full of nothing but cat videos. I'm going to not want a cat. I, I told my wife not too long ago, what if we got a cat? You know, cats don't smell or anything and I think you can, you can get them fixed or something so they don't spray and all that. That'd be nice and clean. And they go and they, they use the bathroom and the thing. You don't really have to take them out, I don't think. What about a cat? But now I don't think I want a cat. I'm tired of seeing cats. I have not shown um, this video. Before I show this video, this was at the link to pre-proper uh, pre party. And John Deaton gave a speech. And I didn't get to be there. And I haven't seen it yet. I've been wondering where this video was. I'm going to sh show you part of it. And then you can go to Ray Fuentes uh, feed and, and uh, see it again. But I do want to tell you this. Today, I'm going to be talking to John Deaton and, not necessarily together, I don't know how it's going to happen, and Stephen Narioff. <laughs> okay? I've never talked to that guy before. I'm going to be talking to both of them. And, of course, I can't show a lot of that stuff out here. I can, t I, I can have John Deaton's commentary on certain things, but a lot of it will be in the private group when I, when I find out what I can and can't say that, that they talk about. And so it's not necessarily today, but probably tomorrow or the next day we'll start releasing some of the stuff, anything that we're allowed to. Stephen Neroff may not want to talk at all. He may say, you can't talk about what I say at all. And that may be the case too, but John, at least I'll have some John stuff minimum. Um, and we'll go. Now watch part of this from John. And this is from Link to my sponsor, right? And they do have Ripple Private Equity on the platform and Link to Private Equity, and they're planning on going public sometime next year. John is a uh, he's a really he's a loyal customer, but he's also a champion of all of us in terms of standing up for all XRP holders. You you guys know what John has done, what John has sacrificed to take that position. I want to introduce John because he's also now written a book. And I would encourage all of you to, if you want to read about a real American hero, buy the book, get book. this man's autograph. I'm so privileged to be standing beside him now that I understand the full depth of what he's achieved given where he's come from. So, with no further ado, everybody, John Deaton. Crypto history. You want to know why? She's the first name. When you go to see everything we did and sued the SEC, the, I couldn't put my name because I'm the lawyer. The first name. The first name is Jordan Deaton versus the SEC. And, and my my daughter is a perfect example. On her 18th birthday, she's 21. On her 18th birthday, she got the money that you get from Christmases and birthdays as a child. She had $15,000. And she said, you know, I hear my dad talking about this revolution. Uh, and she bought a Bitcoin for 10000 nice. And she just bought the top three cryptos. She bought Bitcoin, ETH, and XRP. She never heard of Ripple. She didn't know who Brad Garlinghouse was. She just said, I'm gonna buy the top three of this new asset class. And so as you can tell, it was very personal to me, also as an XRP holder, when the SEC happened. Now so interesting stuff, but go listen to the rest of that when you get a chance. Now, David Schwartz, there was a lot of people talking about the AMM, uh, the AMM, uh, what's it called, an amendment on the XRP ledger. This is a good thread that to, that explains it from David Schwartz back in, um, he did this back June 1, 2023. For those who, 
who want to understand an AMM stra uh, trading strategy and may find the math too com complex to follow, here's a grossly oversimplified way to understand how the trading strategy works. So you have an asset that's volatile, but n no significant long-term trend. Uh, price changes a lot, da, da, da. That means that the movement you typically see would be at like 100 to 110, 100 to 100, or 100 to 90, et cetera. Let's look at these movements. So that's a plus 10, there's a minus 9.1, a plus 11.1. Again, the average percentage movement is positive. If you have an asset whose volatility ex exceeds its long-term trend, the average price movement will be positive. If the long-term trend is negative, th that just reduces the average somewhat. If the long-term trend is positive, that increases it somewhat. It's not too difficult to implement a trading strategy whose yield tracks the average percentage movement of the stock. For example, buying some amount of stock, then always buying or selling the stock to keep the value of your holdings constant has that property. The trading strategy in AMM implements, though more complex than that, the, that simple one, also has this property of harvesting volatility. Note that this, anyway, so you get the picture and then here's a video where he taught, where he talks about how it works too. Something near and dear to my heart, the automated market maker. I almost said automated money maker. So Ripple X focused on differentiating our decks with automated market making in conjunction with the central limit order book and integrated with payments so that these three features work together to provide a feature set that is unmatched. This is not everybody else has automated market makers, now we have them too. This is everybody else had automated market makers because they couldn't build an order book, which is volatility is harvested by the automated market maker. Normally volatility just results in risk and a reduction in yield. But here it's a gain in yield. The automated market maker actually implements a trading strategy that converts volatility into yield. So this could really turn the volatility of a digital asset from a downside to an upside, super excited about it. You reach a point where like everything works together and it just fits really nice and you're like, yes, this is like, like really nice and, and we're reaching that point. All right, now check this out. Uh, JP Morgan's launched the tokenization platform using, imagine that they've been developing all of this while Ripple's been tied up in a lawsuit. Um, blockchain com completed its first transaction with BlackRock tokenizing shares in a mo money market fund. Wow. Then here you have David Marcus. It's important to note, David Marcus is the same guy who was the president of PayPal when they announced PayPal Galactic. We never heard about it again. He then pops up to create Libra, the digital asset for Facebook, and then it changes the name to Diem, and then they fold the whole project. And now he's telling you that Mark Zuckerberg's all about Bitcoin. You can theorize a lot about um, the experience we've had, but having lived it uh, has changed my worldview and my appreciation in such a way that now I have this unshakable conviction that Bitcoin is the only form of neutral internet money there will ever be. And, uh, and it's one thing saying it because you have laser shooting from your eyes. Uh, it's another uh, coming to that conclusion after having tried for the right reasons, I, I believe for the right reasons, to build uh, a technology that would scale to billions of people and that could provide a stable form of digital money that would travel on this new scalable payment system. Uh, and then you've come to the real, you come to the realization that actually private companies issuing Un, a new unit of account of anything that has that kind of distribution uh, is problematic. Well, if it's problematic, then maybe it would be problematic for four Satoshis that Homeland Security met with to issue it to. Wouldn't that be problematic? Why is he not asking about that? Now, Raul Paul tells you about Gary Gensler and his politics um, on thinking um, crypto. Going back to Gary Gensler and the SEC, taking a lot of losses. Uh, when the Ripple situation, XRP, intrinsically not a security, obviously depends on how it is um, offered. Um, Grayscale taking a loss there. They're pursuing Coinbase. I don't think that's going to go well. Um, what were your thoughts on the outcomes of these uh, lawsuits? And do you think Gary Gensler has much time in office uh, where he's going to get kicked out? Well, once you start conflating politics with legal, um, with 
legal precedent, that's when you realize that's when you start losing cases. Mm. So they're doing it for politics and the court is throwing it out for the right reasons, which is this is not legal. So I think there's a bunch of these. I'm sure the SEC will win a couple here and there, but they're not going to win these big cases. I mean, I've always said the sheer number of smart people and the amount of money in this space that is focused on these issues is gigantic. The government is up against something much bigger than picking off an investment bank. You're picking off people who are super motivated by what this space represents and where it's going. And the people in the space are literally the smartest people in the world. So they don't go to fight without knowing that they're coming with a bazooka to that fight. Well, the SEC is treating it like it's a bunch of cowboys. They have no real understanding of who they're up against. You know, this is a cultural phenomenon they're trying to fight with people who are highly motivated to win. Mm. There you go. Um, and then you got this. <laughs> this is from Wheezy. But according to Anthony Scaram uh, Scaramucci, they did all the, di the due diligence. Folks, this whole FTX thing, and I'm going to talk about all of that in, in my group because there's, I'll, t I'll show you why in a second. But make no mistake, folks, these guys, these are the, most of these, not all, most of the same people that were involved in Eastgate. This is not some accident, not at all. How did so many people miss what on the surface appears to be so many obvious... And I'm not saying that all of them were are guilty of something. I'm just saying that the people that were that had deep knowledge of what was going on, I, man, come on. Flags. What did due diligence look like on the investor side? You went through a standard checklist of due diligence, uh, questionnaire, background checks, data room, accounting, financial analysis, audited. Okay. I think their due diligence involved... Um, making sure that the government was behind this. He had everything. I mean, you don't uh, dupe 25 of the world's most sophisticated venture capitalists if you're not going through the list, you know. So he had all the paperwork that any high profile experienced investor would really look to. Yes, he did. There was no smoke in any quarter. No smoke. Um, then we've got this. This looks like a, more, a little more over the target to me. Coinbase director Connor Grogan says SBS bankrupt crypto from Alameda Research is responsible for minting approximately 40 billion of, of tethers USDT. He's, in, he's entirely correct. The SBF fraudulent scheme is much larger than anyone thinks. Half of tethers market cap and nearly 85% of Bitcoin's volume were propped up by the counterfeit funds. The dominoes will collapse as more information is revealed about FTX. Binance and Tether, and how they orchestrated this scheme. This is why whales are exiting in droves. Folks, this is why I have a private group. Look, every, all roads, <laughs> let's, let's count them. FTX, Tether, Ethgate, um, uh, um, Bit, Bitcoin, MIT Media Lab. Here's some of the things. What, what does it all have in common? This right here. All of it, Jeff, I'm not going to say that name. I'll say that in the private group. All of it has, has ch China, okay? So in the, in the group, and I'm probably, I've got so much stuff, I'm probably going to have to t cut half of it and put the other half in the next video. But I told you, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to do Neri off. Um, I'm going to talk about, talk to him. I'm going to talk to John Deep. Now, I don't know if that stuff, that stuff's probably not going to be in, in any of today's videos. But if I'm allowed to talk about any of it, it'll be in my group tomorrow, probably. We're going to talk about FTX here in a minute. We're going to talk about the MIT Media Lab, either in the, this video or the next video. Joy, remember Joy Ito? Remember Gary Gensler? Remember the Island Man? We're going to talk about those things. We're going to, remember, do you know who Jim Newsom is? We're going to, he was... Ethgate. We're going to talk about that because I found something on that. We're going to talk about Gary Gensler and all of it. He just happens to pop up anywhere that there's nefarious stuff going on. What about his involvement in FTX and all that? And then one other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you saw Brad Garlinghouse mention that XRP Las Vegas was going to happen again in 2024. Well, um, 
I'll make sure I'm there. And the people in my group, I'm going to give away, I'm going to do some type, I haven't set it up yet, but I'm going to do some kind of a private dinner and, um, and I'm going to give, say, five tickets away for people that are in my group. But we don't know when that is or where it's going to be or anything like that yet, but I am going to do that. Um, so now I leave the YouTube people behind and we are heading to the private group. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. We still want to know about those ties to FTX, those meetings. Thanks for listening.